one and see the battle of these electric type Pokemon, which one is going to be superior. Um, and it's going to be the Zapdos and Grimmsnarl coming out for Chemo on the right hand side of the field. And Regieleki and Moltres out on Wolf's side. So both of those electric Pokemon out in force. I wonder what's going to happen here, Lee. Uh, the Moltres, of course, looking to be a little bit precarious from the electric type attacks from that Zapdos. But Chemo might be able to utilize the opportunity to maybe go for some kind of setup with his two Pokemon. Yeah, now the Zapdos is an interesting one on Chemo's side of the field because it does put a lot of pressure onto that Moltres and really kind of puts it off going for that, that nasty plot that which you would normally see it go for here. The Zapdos has to be careful if it does target into it, as you saw in that previous game, that uh, there's Moltres, Glarian Moltres does tend to carry that weakness policy. So firing off an electric type attack into it and not picking up the knockout could be very dangerous to having some big repercussions if it can survive the attack and then return with a big attack of its own. Yeah, well, it's going to be the Dynamax Zapdos taking for the field. Very explosive start here for Chemo. Just wants to get Dynamax out on the field. Can apply a lot of pressure with Zapdos. Maybe going for something like the Max Airstreams to be able to get the speed up on his side of the field. Um, it is indeed going to be Wolf, however, also matching with a Dynamax of their own. Um, interesting combination of events here. You know, seeing Wolf actually go for that early on Dynamax. In his previous match, we saw him in the winner's bracket. He was actually going for that Dynamax a little bit later on. But this time, Moltres straight out of the blocks wants to be able to get that additional HP advantage and start dealing some really big damage and also allows it to be potentially protected from any of those electric type attacks able to take it a little bit better reggie Alecki going for the light screen however on um, wolf side of the field of course going to boost up the special defenses as zapdos does go for that max airstream to targeting down into the reggie Alecki. reggie Alecki able to survive though on 20 hp as the speed on chemo side will be boosted up the critical hit dealing that additional damage but not enough to be able to pick up the ko wolf will still have reggie Alecki. Um, after taking that damage and Zapdos revealing itself to have the life orb. Moltres is going to retaliate with that max darkness targeting down, going to reduce the special defense of both the Chemo's Pokemon there. Not dealing a huge amount of damage though, however, but I think the critical thing here is to be able to get those stat drops, you know, special attacker there and the Reggie Alecki as well can apply a good amount of pressure. But Grimmsnarl is going to follow up with the Spirit Break into the Reggie Alecki and thanks to the critical hit previously, easily going to be able to pick up the KO against it, leaving Wolf free to bring in a Pokemon from the back, but he does indeed lose his Reggie Alecki. Yeah, losing the Regieleki is not always the, the greatest thing here. I think a smart play from Chemo, prioritizing that Pokemon here with an Airstream to get a speed boost on your side of the field while also making sure that you're utilizing the Grimmsnarl and its offensive pressure that it can provide. You know, the next turn we're going into this, it still has access potentially screens, so it could support the Zapdos a little bit more, but you saw how well it took that Max Darkness from the Moltres mm. on Wolf's side of the field. Um, and you know, with the light screen support, it's gonna probably take about the same damage again and negate that that special defense drop that we have just seen it take. Now Wolf in a decent position with the dust clops on the field now has option to really mitigate those airstreams that we have seen so far thrown out from Chemo's side where he can set up a trick room and then give the, the Moltres a little bit more of an advantage against both of these Pokemon on Chemo's side of the field. That's the thing, Wolf's presented with an opportunity where he can really capitalize on the fact that Chemo's opted to go for those max airstreams and will in a way punish them by reversing the speed if he does go for Trick Room on that Dust Glops, allowing his side of the field to have the advantage. Um, it's going to be another max airstream from the Zapdos um, going straight into that Moltres, of course, easily going to be able to take that. And the speed, once again, going to be channeling up on Chemo's side, putting the Pokemon at plus two speed. Um, of course, Zapdos again taking that little bit of recoil. Those little bits of chip can add up. We've seen it happen before. Zapdos going to follow up with the Max Darkness. And despite the drop, still not able to pick up the KO against the Zapdos. You know, that additional bolt coming in from being in your Dynamax form um, really does help out. And it's just allowing Zapdos the longevity here on the field. But Dusclops going for that Trick Room does put Chemo in a really precarious situation where his Pokemon that's opted to get super fast speed boosts now might be in a little bit of a tricky situation. Yeah, definitely a tricky situation to say the least, Lou, as the Moltres now will be able to pick up a knockout onto that, that Zapdos on Chemo's side of the field. And you can see how precarious trainers are approaching Moltres. And this is why it's such a big threat. They don't, even if they've got access to super effective moves, they don't want to attack into it unless they've weakened it first to make sure that they aren't leaving themselves vulnerable to a weakness policy activation and then getting knocked out in return. And that trade-off there is just not worth it. But Wolf using that to his advantage here and making sure that he's taking advantage of those airstreams getting Dusclops onto the field after losing the Reggie Alecki and getting the Trick Room set up and putting himself into a really nice position now as we see the Tapu Fini enter the field for Wolf. 
Yeah, I like this play here. Being able to get the Tappy Finney and potentially getting yourself up a Calm Mind boost and then you can apply a lot of pressure going forward is a good opportunity here for Wolf. Moltres, of course, going to enjoy the Trick Room environment it's in at the moment, can fire off that Max Darkness and pick up the KO against the Zapdos, protecting that Tappy Finney from any potential electric type moves. So it gives Wolf really the opportunity to bring in that Tappy Finney quite safely um, so that it can, in the next turn, be able to start going for those setups. Um, of course, Kimo, on the other hand, now does have the option to bring in a Pokemon from the back that might appreciate this Trick Room environment a little bit more the spirit break however of course going to lower the special attack on wolf's moltres but in a way it, it's kind of had a counter counteractive approach berserk is of course going to activate and so is the weakness policy putting that moltres right back up into a really formidable position yeah, you can see the Spirit Break there, take the Moltres down to minus one, the Berserk activate, putting it back to neutral, and then the Weakness Policy on top of that, putting it to plus two, so becoming a very formidable threat <laughs> very quickly and all in one turn. But that is the end of its Dynamax turns, so it's not as threatening going forward. We're still in the Trick Room, and you've got to imagine now with the Tapu Fini coming onto the field for Chemo, uh, the Tapu Fini probably will underspeed the, the Moltres on Wolf's side of the field, so that is now not going to really enjoy the Trick Room as much as it was when the Zapdos was out on the field just now. That's the thing, the Max Airstreams only affect the Pokemon that were on the field when they were activated. So Tapu Fini able to come in, won't have those speed boosts, can potentially turn this around for Kimo here and pick up a KO against that Moltres. Um, Grimmsnarl, however, going to use its Prankster ability and go for those fake tears, saying, I don't really care what's going on with the speed stats. Going to be able to lower the special defense on Wolf's Tapu Fini. Wolf going to go for the Moonblast with his Tapu Fini, though, into that Grimmsnarl, easily pick up the KO. You know, those Max Darknesses have really dwindled the special defense of that Grimmsnarl. It was going to be a really easy KO, but the Tapu Finny on chemo side able to go for a moon blast as well tugging me down into that Moltres that is oh. able to survive with 11 hp firing off an air slash in retaliation into tapu Finny. not going to be dealing a huge amount of damage takes it down to i think it was about a third and now with the recovery about a quarter of damage but you know every little can help in this match yeah and uh, i was expecting the the air slash to do a lot more there to the tapu Finny, but it's trained very defensively well here um, from Kimo's side as we see the Incineroar come onto the field and now I think if you're Wolf you really want this Trick Room to end I think you know the Grimmsnarl getting that fake tears off into the, the Tapu Fini on your side of the field you may want to try and switch your Tapu Fini out now to to just get rid of those stat drops get Dusclops back onto the field and then keep Tapu Fini for the late game because it's going to be very useful against something like the Incineroar that we've just seen come onto the field for Kimo here that's the thing, Kimo with the Incineroar here can go for something like a fake out and Wolf needs to play around that wisely. You know, you don't want your Tapu Fini to stay on the field and maybe take an attack into that lower special defense if, you know, it gets faked out and Tapu Fini can follow up. So I think bringing in the Dusclops here is really wise. It resets the drops on that Tapu Fini and Dusclops is relatively stable enough to take anything this Tapu Fini wants to throw at it. Incineroar goes for that fake out into that slot. Of course, being a ghost type won't even do any chip damage to it upon its joining of the field and Moltres protecting itself quite wisely from the Moonblast there, but it does give Kimo the opportunity to regain a little bit more HP with that Tapu Fini and Wolf able to switch up his ball position to a more favourable option. Yeah, definitely a more favourable option, but still that, that Moltres on Wolf's side of the field still in an awkward position now uh, with this Trick Room still set up. The Dusclops going to be able to get some damage off onto the field, but uh, we do see a double protect there to try and see if it can get through these latter turns of the Trick Room here. Yeah, not able to get a double protect on this occasion. Incineroar going to be going for that Darkest Lariat. It's targeting right down into the Dusclops. Does a decent chunk of damage, probably about a third there, of course, being super effective as Tapu Fini follows up with the Muddy Water, able to connect on both of Wolf's Pokemon, easily picking up the KO against that Moltres and doing a little bit more damage to that Dusclops, but it's still sitting at over 50% damage, um, HP remaining, so it would be able to potentially take a combination of those attacks again, and it's just where the Wolf kind of has the utility um, with his Tapu Fini and Dusclops Scops remaining to be able to take down these last Pokemon on Kimo's side of the field. Yeah, and it's it's going to be very difficult. And I think it comes down to how well the only speed control that we've got in the field is from that Dust Clops that, that Wolf has access to. So can he utilize the, the Trick Room to maybe take advantage of the match this way? It will be interesting to see. But you, both threats on Kimo's side with the Incineral revealing that Darkest Lariat big big problems for the disc clubs and if it goes down this turn then things get a lot more difficult for wolf going into the the rest of this game 
Well, a Moonblast, a piece for the Tapu Finnies. The Moonblast coming out from oh. Tapu Finney on Wolf's side, dealing a lot more damage to the Tapu Finney on Kimo side than it dealt to the Dusclops. Dusclops, as you saw there, having a really clutch survival on one HP, able to go for that Trick Room and just give Wolf the sort of the speed environment that he would prefer in this scenario. And I mean, what a survival there from the Dusclops. That is huge. On one HP, the Dusclops hangs on. Shonk, once again, what a consistent Trick Room user it really <laughs> is. And, uh, and really pulling Wolf back into this game now. The Tapu Fini going to be very close to being knocked out by a Nightshade. And the Incineroar is not a Pokemon that you really want to be facing down against the Tapu Fini in whatever environment here. Um, especially because we haven't seen Snarl. That is another common move that you'd normally see on Incineroar to reduce the, uh, the effective and reduces special attack damage on something like a type of Finny now, but we're just seeing the Darkest Lyric, which has been continuously clicked here as a move choice by Chemo. Yeah, but Dusclops really making the most of this opportunity, going for that um, pain split, dealing a huge amount of damage and regaining some um, HP itself from that Incineroar, so kind of utilizing the advantage that Chemo had with the HP on Incineroar against him a little bit. Light screen wearing off as well. So Tapu Fini on Wolf's side looking really relatively healthy. And if Wolf is able to kind of dwindle the HP down um, on that Tapu Fini, it's going to easily be a KO or anything that Tapu Fini on Wolf's side wants to throw out against it. And like you said, Lee, there's not really a lot that Incineroar can do to Tapu Fini in this scenario. No, and that's the problem, I think. If it had Snarl, it might be able to really kind of reduce its effectiveness here and, and stop the, the damage and allow then your Tapu Fini to kind of start out damaging the opposing one <laughs> on the field. But because of that Darkest Lariat and what you're kind of relying on, and you can see it's just not doing the damage it needs to into the Dusclops here. Um, are we going to see a double up maybe from Chemo's side? But as you're doing that you know the one problem with doing that is you you're not getting the damage off onto the the tapu fini which is actually the the real offensive threat on wolf's side of the field yeah exactly incineral just not able to pick up the ko against that dusclops and constantly with each of those pain splits the hp is being dwindled closer and closer to zero on that incineral side whereas the tapu fini as you can see on wolf's side it's just it's really untouched at this stage it's sitting in a really good position we know that has access to spread moves um such as the muddy water and with the hp being dwindled down on chemo's tapu fini it's looking very very vulnerable dusclops however just going to go straight for the nightshade giving incineral very little room to maneuver it's going to go for that darkest larry and connecting into um, that Dusclops. Uh, I think this time it is finally going to be able to get the KO. I'm sure Incineroar is going to be happy about that, but then it still has to face down against that Tapu Fini, and I don't think, as mentioned, Lee, it has as many options for Tapu Fini as it had for Dusclops. No, I don't think it's got as many at all, and I think such low health at the minute. We've just seen the Protect there from Kimo's Tapu Fini. It's not really going to have the opportunity to go for it again. I mean, you could do, but I don't really want to see what advantage this is going to get you here. We've not really seen too much from the Incineroar to say it's a threat to Wolf's Tapu Fini. So I feel like he's got the, the position now. He's got the damage off that he's needed to to get to this far in the match. And it's been enough for him to potentially close this down with a Trick Room ending after this turn. Well, Darkest Larius coming into Tapu Fini from that Incineroar does a little bit of chip damage as Tapu Fini can go for that Moonblast. Finally able to connect onto the Tapu Fini on Chemo's side. We've seen it go for those Protects a couple of times and kind of avoid having to take this KO as the Trick Room ends. But regardless of the speed at this stage, I don't think a critical hit from Incineroar is going to be able to save the day for Chemo. That Tapu Fini on Wolf's side is just too strong in this situation. Yeah, no, I don't think there would be a single critical hit that would save you in that situation, unfortunately. But, I mean, very well positioned there by, by Wolf. And we identified early on what he was he was mm. trying to do by getting the Dusclops on the field when he did and get that Trick Room up. And it was so pivotal that he did because that was the, the kind of the big change in that game there where he was able to get the Trick Room up and then use that, that Dusclops to really disrupt what Kimo was trying to do at that point and wear down the opposing Tapu Fini that was the biggest threat. And I think, you know, in previous matches, we haven't really seen what we've covered so far Tapu Fini kind of excel and and warrant its places on that kind of the pedestal of top used Pokemon and I think mm -hmm. we're starting to see why it's such a good Pokemon in this match here because of the ability it has to really just chip away chip away and chip away especially when it's got a nice partner like Dusclop sitting next to it that causes a lot of disruption and drags in a lot of attention from your opponent it frees up Tapu Fini just to sit there a lot of the time and when you take advantage of those board positions which Wolf is so good at in the end game there it's very difficult to come back on I think Chemo mm -hmm. is unfortunate not to get the knockout one HP is very fine margins if you oh, get yeah. it there I think <laughs> the game becomes a lot easier because there's no trick room your Tapu Fini probably had speeds Wolf's Tapu Fini we're assuming from the information that we got mm -hmm. from the trick room 
and then it becomes a little bit easier the two on one there it becomes a bit easier to deal with and it wouldn't have been as easy as i'm talking about but i think for chemo mm -hmm. it may have been a different outcome there if the dust clops have went down but as we've seen again dust clops provide an incredible incredible support and <laughs> what a, a nuisance it can be <laughs> oh yeah i mean on wolf's side there having the dust clops and tapping finish towards that end game dust clops kind of playing the defensive side uh, really you know being able to hold on for that really pivotable like one hp that was just phenomenal to be able to see and it just enabled wolf to be able to put the speed the way that he wants it for on the offensive side that tapu finny i mean we saw it go from moonblast after moonblast after moonblast and you know kind of giving a nod to the item choice on that poker one as well but the damage output that it was doing was just phenomenal um and it just you know was able to take that game one for wolf so let's jump into game two and see if Tapu Finney is going to be jumping back into the action, whether we're going to see two Tapu Finneys on the field once again, or if our trainers are going to change things up, well, it's going to be Grimmsnarl and Zapdos out on the field for Chemo. And no surprises here, Reggie Alecki and Moltres out here for Wolf. So once again, we've got the two electric types here on the field, able to apply pressure. The Reggie Alecki, of course, can deal some damage with its electric type moves or can go for those screens. And I feel like going for the screens here is going to be optimal. Um, it just allows you that little bit of longevity here on the field. Yeah, I think that we saw how useful they were in the in the first game. The the light screen support that the Reggie Alecki it went down very early in the game, but it provided so much support for Wolf to actually function very well and not have to worry too much about the the the, the, the Kanto Zapdos that is such a threat. Um, and I would like to see Kimo maybe be a bit more bold here. And I think going into game two, he needs to kind of make things up here. Maybe a uh, Spirit Break and a Max Lightning could be enough to do the job on this Moltres, but it's it's a very risky play. Like we've seen, the, the weakness policy is there, and if you go for it, you've got to have a lot of conviction that it's going to pay off. Otherwise, it could come back to, to really bite you and take this game away from you. It's such a critical point in this tournament. Exactly. Well, two Dynamax Pokemon here on the field in all of their majesty. It's going to be the Moltres and the Zapdos. You know, two of those sort of legendary bird Pokemon here out in the action. I love to see this as Reggie Alecki goes for that light screen. Once again, boosting up the special defense on Wolf's side of the field. It's going to be another Max Airstream from the Zapdos on Chemo side, however. So this game really playing out very similar to how game one started. Reggie Alecki able to take that much better, though, as there was no critical hit this time around. So potentially the follow up from Grimmsnarl if it is Spirit Break again into that slot. Reggie Lecky will be able to hang on and survive out the turn. Moltres going for that Max Darkness once again, straight into the Zapdos. Does a decent amount of damage, of course, nothing compared um, to what it would be aiming for, but I think it gets that special defense boost, able to weaken Chemo's Pokemon going forward. They're going to be a little bit weaker and more susceptible to those special attacks coming forward. Reggie Alecki is, of course, able to hang on despite the Spirit Break. It will, of course, get a special attack dropped, uh, but it does put Reggie Alecki into a more favorable position than it was in Game 1. Yeah, and I think this really identifies how crucial that critical hit was in game one. You know, losing the Regilecki so early on meant that the, it, Wolf wasn't really able to get the most out of this Pokemon. Got his screens up, which was very beneficial, but we can now see it can put a bit of more pressure onto the both opponent's Pokemon on, on Kimo's side of the field because the Regilecki is going to be faster even after the Airstream, you would assume, than the Zapdos, depending on how it's trained, of course. And with that special defense drop as well, it's going to be able to do decent damage to both Pokemon here and for that Grimmsnarl into going for that light screen support that it so desperately needs at this point. Yeah, it's what both of these trainers need when they're facing down against such strong special attackers, making sure that the light screen's up on their side of the field. And Chemo's definitely going to be glad that he's managed to put that... Um up on there as the Reggie Alecki goes for the self vault switch activating the weakness policy on Wolf's own Moltres not only does this allow the Moltres to be really really powerful but it also allows Wolf the maneuverability get his Reggie Alecki in on out of there and reset the special attack drop that it took and bring the dust drops here on the field Zapdos going to go for the max lightning into the dust drops able to take that only does about a third of damage and the Moltres now still here ready to move is going to be boosted up of course by having the weakness policy activated I mean what a masterful play that we're going for that self-activation Moltres going for that max darkness going to connect into the Moltres on Chemo's side and actually is able to pick up the solid KO against Chemo's um, Zapdos with the critical hit this Moltres is not playing around here Lee it is here wanting to try and take its trainer into those global finals yeah, definitely, and a really great play here from Wolf, and a bit unfortunate for Chemo because the Regilecki here actually sticking around, like we mentioned, not getting hit by the critical hit in the second game meant it was able to get the Volt Switch to boost that Moltres 
and activate the weakness policy which has then allowed it to pick up a knockout and now still dynamaxed in a very very dangerous position here max airstream being an issue especially for the tapu finny here it's going to get hit if it targets into that slot it's going to take a lot of damage and obviously the grim snarl as well has taken those special defense boosts already so it is going to be in a little bit of an awkward position if it wants to stick around any longer in this game and really have much more effectiveness I mean, it was great for Wolf to be able to capitalize on the special attack, attack drop that Reggie Alecki had as well, not dealing as much damage to his own Moltres. And Moltres here going for that max airstream, so Wolf going more on the speedier side of the tournament this time, picking up that solid KO against the Grim Snarl. He's really not playing around at the stage, wants to get every single KO and dive into those global finals potentially. And Grim Snarl is going to be KO returning to Kimo, and Kimo is now down to his last two remaining Pokemon. Tappy Finney utilizing opportunity to go for that Calm Mind, wants to make sure that even behind the light screen, it's got that additional special defense boost in the face of this Moltres. And we know Tappy Finney is a very good answer for the Moltres, but the way the Moltres is running at the minute and the fact that Dusclops is able to help out, taking away 50 HP from that Tappy Finney, it's going to be a formidable threat to be reckoned with. Yeah, definitely. And you make a really good point about the Spirit Break benefiting Wolf there on the Regieleki, reducing the, the attack damage there from the special attack and meaning that he's not taking as much damage when the Moltres actually has that weakness policy activated. A really nice play all in all. The Tapu Finney there getting the Calm Mind up. I think it's a, it's a nice play because then it starts making this Tapu Finney very threatening very quickly. The Moltres is going to be prone to potentially a fake out here from the Incineroar, but you're quite free with Dusclops at this point to maybe just go for a Nightshade and get more damage onto the Tapu Fini. Once you can remove that Tapu Fini from the field, it's going to mean that you've got quite a lot of resource left to deal with in Incineroar. That's not maybe the most offensive Pokemon that you want out against the remaining Pokemon that Wolf's got left. Yeah, exactly. Incineroar coming into the fray can only go for that fake out once. Um, doesn't actually even opt for it on this occasion. Kimo just wants him to go straight out on the offensive as Tapu Fini goes for a Nullet Calm Mind. So we're really trying to make sure that the special defense is boosted up. We know Kimo's Tapu Fini can go for those protects, maybe try and regain some HP using the leftovers and just try and keep the longevity here on the field. Incineroar going to go for that Darkest Lariot, targeting down into the Dusclops. Not enough to be able to pick up the KO, though, so Dusclops will still be able to move and goes for that Pain Split once again into Incineroar. Really punishing the high HP that it dares to still have towards the end of this game and Duskops of course now in the face of those Darkest Larry it's going to be able to hang on a little bit longer as well yeah, a really nice play there, pulling the Dusclops from the brink back into this game. The ability there, just sharing the HP with that Incineroar on Kimo's side of the field. And now in a position again where the Dusclops is free to go for maybe a Nightshade here and potentially with an Air Slash as well. The, the problem with Moltres is it does have access to attacks that can flinch the opponent and being the fastest Pokemon on the field because of that airstream then it does have the chance and all you would need with Moltres is to get maybe one flinch onto the Tapu Fini with either um, obviously an air, air slash which it will be going for its signature dark type attack which is not the most optimal play. Yeah, that's the thing. Tapu Finney's definitely got the kind of type advantage against Moltres in this scenario. But Kimo really punishing down onto this Dusclops. Just wants to remove it from the field once and for all. So double targets up with the Moonblast, followed by the Darkest Lariat. Um, not enough, however, to be able to pick up the KO. And the sort of the lesser um, HP Dusclops has, the more it can take from those... Um, Pain splits, but the interesting thing there is actually Duskulls went for that haze, removes all of the stat boosts, including the ones on the Moltres. But I think the critical thing Wolf has identified is you need to remove the stat boosts on that Tapu Finney because, yes, it has the plus two special defense, but it also had plus two special attack, and it was critical for Wolf to be able to remove that threat. Yeah, it's a, a really, really smart play here because you would think in most situations with Haze, I've got my Moltres set up now. I've, I've got the, the attack boost that I want. I don't want to remove them. But in really when you're looking towards the end of this game, I think the Tapu Fini on Kimo side is the one threat that you need to prepare for. And removing those boosts that it has got to its special attack and special defense is huge going into these next few turns. and slows it down a little bit and kind of occupies it this turn, as you see, with another Calm Mind here. I love the shade that this Moltres is throwing to Tapu Fini right now. You know, Tapu Fini had its plus two special attack stat removed and Moltres is able to get that back on itself with one move. But Tapu Fini has to click Calm Mind twice in order to get back to that established status. So Moltres really looking again strong, having that nasty plot boost up. It can still start dealing out some really good damage despite the haze that previously had gone off from the Dusclops. 
Yeah, and the other thing to mention here as well, that Regieleki is still in the back for Wolf, and that was a re that's a really good Pokemon to have in an endgame versus Tapu Fini, especially if you can mitigate those Calm Minds. If Regieleki comes mm -hmm. in, you know for you know you're guaranteed to outspeed the Tapu Fini, and you can if you can get it down to a good enough HP level, you can knock it out even with a couple of boosts under its belt. Yeah, exactly. The Pokemon advantage definitely is in Wolf's favor at the moment. You know, Kimo is down to his last two remaining Pokemon, and Wolf not only has that Regieleki in the back, but he also has the maneuverability on the field. Air Slash going to Tapu Fini actually does get the flinch as well, so it is unable to move this turn. Tapu Fini on Wolf's side going to target it down. While it was unable to move, not enough to be able to pick up the KO, however, but another Air Slash going into that slot will be able to pick up the KO on the next turn. But that Flare Blitz coming out from the Incineroar does a huge amount of damage to the Moltres. But, of course, activates the Berserk. Moltres is even and stronger now as we head into the next turn yeah now on plus three after the nasty plot and then <laughs> that berserk boost and yeah it, it feels a little bit too difficult i i think the tapu fini did well to survive that turn there with the, the double up into it but at this point it's got such low health and i don't think the incinero is going to be able to kind of match up to what wolf's got left in resources and um just a bit overwhelming at this point but you never know well, Tapu Fini on Kimo's side, Kimo going for that muddy water, trying to target down both of Wolf's Pokemon. If you get some accuracy drops, you know, a game can really turn on that particular stat drop. Um, not to be, however, Tapu Fini on Wolf's side, able to see clearly through the muddy water and go for that move blast, picking up the KO against that Tapu Fini once and for all. And Kimo is now just down to the Incineroar, which is going to go for a Flare Blitz into that Protect. And, you know, Wolf, he's got four Pokemon remaining down against this Incineroar. And Incineroar is a phenomenal Pokemon. We talk about it a lot. It was so high up in those usage statistics, but I don't know if it can take down all of Wolf's team by itself. No, it feels a little bit too much of a task for Incineroar as we do see the forfeit there and Wolf progress.